every now and again in life, you come across a moment that may never occur again. Today is one of those moments, and I am sharing with you the artifact in the black market. I'm not going to be able to buy it, but this is the rarest thing that can that can appear on this little table. Oh, it's so very beautiful, but it's 27,000. There's no way that I can even, I mean, there's one hour and six minutes remaining. There's no way that I can even dream of buying it, but I can look at it. Mm, hello there artifact. To start off today, I want to say a massive thank you to a very smart comment. The comment was about this setup here, my, my garbage junk drawers, which are just here to void all of this stuff that you find inside the chests automatically when I'm done with a vault. And the comment said, why don't you make the 2x2 two two drawers instead, Iskal? And yeah, they, they are completely correct. Why didn't I make the 2x2? Two two? They are just a hundred times better to do the job that these drawers are supposed to do. I'll show you why. <laughs> Wait, I just crafted the wrong drawers. <laughs> now the reason these are better for voiding things specifically is because I can put four items into one. And the drawback is that these are smaller. They can only store 512 per slot. But I don't, I don't care about uh, the amounts of uh, scaffolding I'm saving. On the contrary, however, I just need one void upgrade for four different items. This is this is just so much better, and I can't believe I've never thought about it. Never have I thought that this would be a solution to save on resources and space. So, again, thank you so much to my very smart viewers. Aha! <laughs> They're very cute as well. Hello, episode 8, and what an episode it is. Because today, I've updated to update 10, which is super, super exciting. And today I'm going to show you the new stuff and talk a little bit about the patch. That is the, the plan of this episode. Now, for those of you who don't know, you can read the full patch notes on our website, vaulthunters.gg. And while I'm not gonna go through every single item, I'm gonna conclude that a lot of bug fixes happened in update 10, which is always good. But there are also three main features, two of which affects us immediately, dual application and dual cutting. Now, first of all, the dual application quest that was in the quest book, Duels on Tools, was changed to teach you about the dual applicator. And since I've already Already done that quest I'm just gonna craft myself one of these tables here it's not very expensive just a bit of driftwood a gemstone and an anvil and there we go the jewel applicator which for now will have to live here hello there jewel applicator this thing replaces the need for an anvil when applying jewels on a tool and it also comes with a bonus of showing you the tool if it would be applicable, but you can see it also calculates whether or not you have enough capacity left, etc, etc, and then shows you how the tool would look if you would apply these jewels. It's super handy, and I'll get into this a little bit deeper when I make a new tool, because we are going to make new tools today. We hit level 20, which means that we have the new tool uh, tier, uh, the chromatic steel. But before we get into that, we've got a new quest as well perfecting jewels. Jewels may not always have the perfect size to be utilized to their maximum potential. Here's a good example. This jewel is very large for what it does. But this is where the jewel cutting station comes in play. And then there's a bit of information about it, but what we should do is craft up a jewel cutting station. And this is also not very expensive, but it does require a handful of Lermar, which I do have. Two of these to steel for driftwood and a glass pane for the little lens on top of this table. Aha! Completed a quest and I guess I'll just place this here for now. Uh, there's the lens. Claim the reward because I think the reward, yep, the reward is some silver scrap which we can put in here now and I do have some more from scrapping jewels and then all we need is a little bit of bronze and now if I put a jewel in here, for example this rather useless 67 size mining speed jewel, I can cut it at the cost of silver scrap and vault bronze. There's a 50% chance of failure, which is significant. Basically every other time I press this button, that happens. <laughs> I break the jewel and I get a gemstone and a Vutadai back. Now that was a chip jewel. If the jewel would have been of a higher tier, which I may not even have a higher tier jewel. Oh, I have this thing here, a very large flawless jewel. If I do the same thing to this, Yep, it still failed, but it instead of breaking, it removed one of the modifiers, so it no longer has a picking, but the size is smaller, from 87 to 81. 
I can go again. Oh, it removed hammer. Okay, now this jewel went from flawless to chipped and it's pretty bad. But there we go. There it at least succeeded. And yeah, as you can see, the size becomes smaller and smaller, which means that you can fit more and more jewels onto your tools. I'm kind of sad that I did that, to be honest, because hammering is very rare. But oh well, I, I am a gambling man in Vault Hunters. Now, update 10 also features new expertise, and one of them helps the gambling addiction. Jewelerer. Jewelerer? Jeweler? Jewelerer. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. You become better at cutting jewels. Increase the likeliness of succeeding to cut a jewel in the jewel cutting station. This would give me an additional 24% chance of succeeding, leaving only 26% chance of failure. Now, this little table and this feature may not seem much, but it's massive. It's absolutely massive and changes the way you make tools in Vault Hunters completely. Also, it looks amazing. <laughs> look, look at the guy laying there ready to be cut. Scared. Very scared. Now, before I move on, the other new expertise is Marketer. Reduces the restock time of black markets. This is a pretty good expertise, I'd say, if you if you choose to go the soul hunting way and use the black market a lot. Because, well, you'll just see a lot more offers constantly in this table. I don't think I'll go it yet, at least. Uh, right now, I, I just, honestly, I, I would love to go jewelerer. The other big feature in update 10 doesn't really concern us yet. But it is a very exciting to present to all of those of you who've been waiting, Altar Automation. This is a mid to end game unlock. It costs 32 knowledge. It is under quality of life, which means that it never gets more expensive. It requires you to have either refined storage or applied energistics unlocked, and it can completely automate the vault crystal creation. It's very satisfying, but as I say, it's, it's not something that we need to be concerned about yet. What I need to be concerned about is sleep. <laughs> Wait. Why did I put the, my trophy skull next to my bed? That's kind of creepy. I should sit here instead and scare off the zombies and the illagers that are invading me. I am really excited about the new jewel applicator and the new jewel cutting station. And I'm very happy that we've hit level 20 because I want to make a new chest breaker. A chromatic steel chest breaker, which I hopefully have the resources to do. I need some carbon, I need some of this, and I need seven of these, and so I have nine. I need a bit of driftwood, more bronze, and then I need something called Vutodic Mass, which is Vutodai in perfected form, surrounded by Vault Essence, I believe. Yes, Vutodic Mass. And I'm going to make a sickle. The reason I'm making a sickle is because then it doesn't come with picking or shoveling, meaning if a chest is on on like dirt or on stone, uh, and I and I insta break it, I don't actually accidentally mine the stuff behind it, which saves durability. So with my new jewel applicator, let's put this in here. Now the chromatic steel version has 150 capacity as opposed to the hundred that normal chromatic iron has. <laughs> Hello there, sir. Now I would love to get a tool that can do all of the different chests. So that means I need living. I need ornate and I need gilded. Unfortunately, I only have one living and my other ornate is mega big, but all of this would fit on here, giving me 24 capacity to work with. I think the gilded one is probably fine, but I might gamble a little bit with the ornate because I do have one more. Come on, get lucky. Yes, only four down though. Oh, yes, 43. Okay, uh, I may... <laughs> I may want to stop here, actually, and not overgreed, so I at least have a tool to begin with. That would leave me with 35 capacity, which means that I could put a coin affinity on as well and do... Co oh, I have a perfect coin. That way I would be able to break all the coin stacks and all the other things. Hmm. Maybe I should craft some jewels and see what I can get. I do have a bit of wood today and gemstones. Yeah. I think I want to craft some jewels. Ooh, a pretty decent copious jewel. A terrible mining speed. Bad shoveling. Bad item quantity. Oh, look at that, a flawless jewel. But unfortunately, it doesn't have anything that I want on my sickle. Oh, gilded and soulbound, 23. How big is this gilded? 26. And now it has soulbound, which means that if I die, it, this doesn't actually die with me. It, it stays with my soul and I resurrect with it. <laughs> An even smaller gilded. Hmm. I wonder if I actually may may value that more or i may try and cut this ah <laughs> i was gonna say and try and cut it to get it perfected i am a gambling man after all smelting is useless for me right now Ooh, 
Not good for this tool, but not a bad jewel at all. Item rarity and a small coin affinity. Now another thing that changed with this update is that gemstones are now a little bit harder to come by because previously you got them almost every time you smelted a jewel like this, but now there's a very small chance that you actually get the gemstone from doing this. Instead, you get silver scrap. If you want the gemstone, you can always cut a jewel and you will be guaranteed a gemstone when it breaks. I'm very quickly running out of materials to do crafting, but I still got a bit. Oh, ornate picking and reach. I don't really want the picking there, but if I get very lucky, I can cut it down. And if it fails, oh, if it fails, I could have taken the picking. I'm going to run out of silver scrap. Oh, a perfect one, but it's too big. It's way too big. Scrap all of these and then get a little bit more silver scrap to work with. Oh, look at this jewel. The last one I can afford. And it's, it's fantastic. Living, item rarity and trap disarm. So now I can take this one out of there and put this one in. And I have a lot more capacity and the trap disarm. Trap disarm is basically saying if the chest is trapped, you may have a chance to disarm the, tra the, the trap. That's a very good jewel for this tool. Okay, so now I have 55 capacity to work with. Hmm, trap disarm is actually great. I wish I had more of them at the more decent sizes though, but I guess, I guess 3% for 13 may actually be worth it. Yes, 12 size for 400, nearly 400 durability. I'll put that on. Brilliant. Now I don't need to finalize the tool at this stage. I can craft it and I, I can put it back in here and add things onto it later, which I think I want to do. I think I'm happy with this. Had I had more ornate ones, I would have looked for a better ornate, but we all got to start somewhere. And this is my new chest breaker. Oh, and another difference between the uh, steel and the iron is that the iron has only one repair where steel has two. So they essentially last double as long. Efficiency and I'm breaking. Next up, I also think it's time to change out my pickaxe for a Paxel inside the vault. And actually, I don't know what base tool I want. If I want a pickaxe, axe or shovel, it all depends on what other jewels I have. Now, this tool is completely different from my other tool because I'm trying to make a main pickaxe that I can mine ores and stuff with. But I also want it to function with breaking wooden chests. And wooden chests, while you require the affinity, does not insta-break without any mining speed. In fact, to get them to insta-break, you would require you to have around 150 mining speed, I think. But the more the merrier with this. So I've, I've collected all my best mining speed jewels and I have a wooden affinity. And then I found this picking jewel, which makes me feel like I should start by making an axe. Because I feel like it's important to be able to break wooden things. I don't care too much about like sand and stuff like that, I don't think. Anyway, where does this take me? This may it makes it into a chromatic steel cutter and it has 18 capacity left with 23 extra mining speed. That's actually pretty good at this level, I think. Now I do have a small shoveling here as well. I wonder if I should opt for more mining speed or if I should just make it a pack so we can break everything. It's nice to have a Paxel. It's very nice to have a Paxel. I think I'm happy with this. It's a Paxel with quite a bit of mining speed and obviously it's nice to not have to manually open the wooden chests but start breaking them instead. Now because I'm going to start breaking wooden chests I actually think it's worth spending a point or two in haste and I have one unspent so let's do that. Do I have anything that I could opt out? I could probably unlearn Hunter didn't feel super useful with two minutes cooldown. So yeah, let's get rid of that and let's get another level in haste. I'd even like a third level, but the third level... Oh, it costs two for the third level. Okay. Mm, yeah, I guess I could also unlearn Vein Miner or bring it back down to Vein Miner 2. That's still 16 blocks, which is still very, very good. I think this is the way to go because this multiplies my, my mining speed by 20% per level. So that's plus 60%. That's quite significant and hopefully now it feels okay to break wooden chests with a pickaxe instead of opening them which i mean I, I gotta be honest breaking chests is so much better than opening them manually any day of the week so there we are we got the big level 20 upgrade of new tools a new paxel and a beautiful sickle chest breaker and it's time to retire my netherite pickaxe for inside the vaults now, in terms of our quest line, we have been tasked with crafting the Spirit Extractor, which 
I think we can make a couple of Lermar. Nice, there's the Spirit Extractor. This is a very important block, and for now, in my camp, it shall live here. This allows me to buy back my items if I die inside a vault. Because remember, I'm not playing casual mode and I've hit level 20, so I'm past the whole uh, die and get everything back for free. Now I can actually see how much it would cost me if I hover this button and currently it would cost me 17 vault gold. That changes both with my level and the gear that I'm wearing. Hopefully we don't have to use it anytime soon, but there's the quest completed. Oh, and I got some gold for that, nice. And now we've got to the point of using infused crystals. There are many ways of enhancing and customizing your Vault Crystal. At level 24, you will start finding Catalyst Fragments. Right, so we need to get to level 24. It's essentially what that quest is telling us. We, gotta, we, we better get back to vaulting, which is exciting, because I get to test out my new tools. Oh, and I also get to try out my new placement of my Vault Altar. Feels good! Find two drowned hide. Oh, if I could get a scavenger hunt, this would be good. Hmm, maybe I could even make a seal. As I've said before, scavenger hunts are probably the toughest objectives in Vault Hunters, but they are my favorite. I love a good scavenger hunt. And 2,000 experience feels like a lot, so yeah, let, let's do let's do this. Hopefully I have everything. I'm still not wearing a chest plate, which is getting more and more risky, but I do like the, I really like, I really like the light drop. Right, here we go. Time to test the new tools. Ooh, the vault is accustomed, which would give me extra experience, I believe, if I do complete it. But, oh, I need four pottery shards and two zombie arms. They are, that's a, that's a pretty difficult scavenger. That I rolled. I'm gonna do my best. The one thing I'm most excited about is to try and break wooden chests now. Ouch. Let's see. Oh yeah. That that breaking speed, I'm fine with that breaking speed. That feels like it's almost competing with the speed of emptying the chest manually, but more importantly, it is very satisfying. You know what I should have done though? It's a scavenger bag. <laughs> I should have made myself a scavenger pouch before I went in here. Wait, I don't usually bring my hammer in. <laughs> Oops. I gotta say, this haste 3 and mining speed investment of this tool is absolutely great. I recommend it dearly to anyone. Breaking, being able to break the wooden chest instead of having to opening them just makes the game a lot more fun. Now, so far, I've actually managed to get two pottery shards. That's a pretty good start in the first room. And with 22 minutes remaining. Ooh. But I gotta keep going. They are they are of the epic rarity, so they are harder to find than other things. Look at this. Vein mining wooden chests. Ah, the feeling. And first mining with my new sickle. I mean, it's just coins. It feels, it feels the same, I suppose. <laughs> I'll check this out. Oh, and then it had to be poisoned. It just had to be poisoned on my demo. Come on. Ornates. I don't need ornates for the scav, but I will always loot a good ornate. Oh, I just got another pottery shards. Two pottery shards. I'm done. I'm done with the hardest thing. Well, it may not be the hardest thing actually because it's just wooden chests, but I'm done with wooden chests for the scav. Now I do need to find some living and some gilded chests. The living one scares me. That's a rare item, the zombie arm, meaning that they're quite, they're quite difficult to find and I gotta find the living chest in the first place. Oh, and I've got an idea. Hello there, zombie uh, husks. Follow me. I see an altar. Get the red particles. There we go. Ah, big brain. Oh, no favor. Aha, finally. A living chest. And I realize this is the first time I break a living chest. Come on, get up. You scared me. As I was saying. As I was saying, this is the first time I break a living chest. Please get lucky. Give me some zombie arms or drowned hide. I need drowned hide for the for the for the bounty. Oh, that's one. Nice. Oh, more living. I can vein mine here as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the feeling is so good. Not a single scav item there though, by the looks of things. Nope. Nothing. That's that's unlucky. Come on. 
Oh, that's a drowned hide, so at least the bounty is completed. But I need, I need the zombie arms. I still haven't seen a single gilded chest either. I found a lot of ornates though. Ooh, that's a rare magnet. Hmm, Villara, my beloved. Yes, you get a favor. It means that the next vault I run, I better complete if I want to be getting the uh, the reputation point. Now my inventory is getting to become a little bit of a mess, mostly because I don't have a, a scavenger pouch. I really have to fix that after this vault, but uh, also because I'm getting some new things after level 20, like mystery eggs and burger cheese. I have to become very selective with my looting, unfortunately, because as I say, I still haven't found a single gilded chest and I'm still struggling with zero zombie arms. Oh, please get lucky. Drowned hide, nothing. And another drowned hide. I suppose it's a continuation of the drowned hide curse. Oh, this guy hurts a lot. I keep finding ornate chests, which I mean, any day of the, the week, it's great because they're, for example, an unidentified chest plate. But right now, it's not what I need. Come on, give, give me at least one zombie arm here. Give me close. Oh, that was a creeper eye. I saw that, but I couldn't pick it up. Hold on. There's another new item, the hearty apple. Yeah, creeper eye is the, is the rarest thing to find. Oh, my first gilded chests. Come on, red scroll. Come on. Oh, that's a jewel. Oh, wait. I do have one red chest scroll already. Ha. Huh. I must have missed picking it up. Ooh, did you hear that sound? That sound is the sound of disarming a, a trap. So that there would have been a trap, but because of my trap disarm on my new sickle, it disarmed it. Very satisfying. Ah, oh, that's a brain. That means that I've got every other piece inside a living chest but the zombie arm. Oh, but there's still a chance. Come on. Nope. Nope. No. Oh. Sir, what type of dungeon do you protect? I was a coin dungeon after all. That's a lot of coins. And that's very satisfying as well. Less than a minute to go. This is... Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to complete. But it's been a really fun vault. I absolutely love the adrenaline of scavenger. They feel challenging, but really fun. And I can't wait to make a scavenger pack. If I can make it out alive, that is. Oof. I'm good. I rate this vault even though I didn't complete it. It's an 8. It's an 8 out of 10. 130 chests and 131 coin piles with 9 ores. Great success! Breaking wooden chests is highly recommended. It makes the game a lot more fun. Now, another thing we added in update 10 was to add rotten as a prefix to all the scavenger items once you exit a vault to indicate that they cannot be used in another vault because I know there was a lot of confusion. The only thing you can do with these items is burn them down for soul value, which is a quest that we haven't yet got to, the soul diffuser. It's actually our next quest, but we have to get to level 24 first. So for now, I'm just going to store them in this chest, I guess. But okay, let's try out the new thing, which is my deluting system. And I usually do this off camera, but let's just see how, how good it works if I do it, if we do it together. So I take out all the items and I double click here. Nice. And do that again. That's one backpack emptied and all of these things. I guess I can do that and then double click again. And then I can put the rest away manually with the arrows. Yep. <laughs> that's that's so fast. That's such an improvement. And by doing this, I can also discover items that I should put in drawers, like Schalke shells, which I'm gonna avoid after I've stacked up 512. I don't think I'm ever gonna need more than that. Probably the same with blank runes. Check this out. All of these scaffoldings, gone. <laughs> so nice. I'm done. I'm done deluding. Let's claim our bounty, have a nice sleep, and open it. I did also find, yeah, I don't find the rare plus and then a flawless jewel, which, oh, it's also pretty good. I don't need it right now, though, but that is not a bad jewel at all. Identify the gear, a gladiator helmet, hmm? Nah, mine is better. I don't wear chest plates yet. Mine is better. And magnet. Oh, right, we have an omega magnet. Okay, may save this one as a backup, though. And with that, 
Let's make a scavenger pouch. A pouch that picks up and specifically holds the scavenger item so that it's easy and quick to see my progression while doing a scavenger run. And since I have a pouch over from my merch to the double pouch, I'll, I'll use Sir Pouch for this. Now in total, I believe there are 27 scavenger items. I could count them, but I'm pretty sure of the number. Let's see how wrong I am. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into memory settings and then I'm just gonna drag and drop. And I wanna try and organize it by chest type. So I know these two are from living just like that. And they're also organized here in, in rarity. So the drowned hide is the one you get the, the easiest and then creep ride the hardest. And then I'll do the same for live uh, gilded. Aha, there we go. And since this is completely full, that means it is exactly 27. I was correct. And 27 is the size of the pouch, which is perfect. Now all I need is a pickup upgrade, which I should be able to make. They are expensive though. Aha! Now I'd have to loot quite a bit before having more than one stack in each of these slots. So I don't think I need a stack upgrade, not yet at least. I think this is all I need for my little scavenger bag. And that is going to make scavenger runs just so much more fun. Now I just want to do another scavenger run and try the backpack out. Salmon, you say? Oh, salmon. Oh, hello there. <laughs> this is perfect. Back before bedtime. Nice. I am going to make another scav seal because I just enjoy them too much and I do want to try out my new pouch. As far as bounties go, I feel like I should re-roll this Mind Gorgonite stuff. Um, <laughs> wait. Find one Gilded Chest Scroll? Find two Gilded Chest Scroll. Come on, what's with the, what's with the Gilded Chest Scroll? No, let's re-roll that again. Item submission. Oh, more Crimson Stem. <gasps> oh, this gives me a repair core and stuff. That's very good. Okay. But I I, I don't want to do that right now. I want to I wanna run my scavenger run. I guess I'll just... I guess I'll just activate this, find two Gilded Chest Scrolls. Ooh, look at this! An orange! 2,300 and I'm at 1,500. I'd love to buy that. Oranges are, you can't like get them anywhere else but Treasure Rooms and Black Market and they give you an extra minute in a vault, which is very good. Anyway, I think I'm ready to go. And hopefully, I'll complete it this time. Oh, I rolled an Omega Spider Webbing Spoon, but I will say I did get one of those in the last one, but two zombie arms again! Oh, and this is a favorite vault. I completely forgot we need to complete this this vault in order to get reputation. It's two times ornate though, which is incredible. That's 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 so rare. That means that there are extra ornate chests. But I don't see any ornate tasks, Mr. Vault. Why? The vault just knows. The vault absolutely just knows. First things first though, I gotta make sure to loot wooden chests so that I can get that spider webbing because that can be super, or that is super rare. You can of course get very lucky. Crab, stop. Oh, and I got it. I got it immediately. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not too worried about the blood vials because they are common and they're from coins, which means that they should be, should be pretty simple to get. But I do worry about the zombie. I wonder if I should just mega focus and try and just look for living chest and give give up everything else or if i should loot like normal hmm oh <laughs> i got it wait i got one of the gilded chest scrolls immediately <laughs> i could have completed the other one in a minute tennos my beloved nope when are my beloved no Oh, there's the one Gorgonite I had as a bounty as well that I opted out of. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, living, come on. Get lucky. Nope. Oh, yes, hello there. Excuse me, I'm just here for zombie arms. Not your arms, that's a brain. Ah, the curse continues. That is my first coin piles. And I need coin piles for my blood vials. Sir, get lucky. Nope. Oh, I got one. Yep. And then... Nope. <laughs> Just one. Oh, and here's some gilded chests. Come on. I don't even know. That's a second zombie brain. I don't even know how the zombie arms smells like. That's my third zombie brain. <laughs> this is... This is just unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievably unlucky. Come on. Yes! Yes, I got one! I got one! I got one! Oh, there's more living. Where there's one, there is more. Yep! Yep! I got him. 
I got it, I got it. Okay, so I think I'm only needing one blood vial. Yes, one blood vial. I have two of these and I have the super rare, uh, uh, where is it? There, spider webbing. Yep, just a blood vial. So just a few coin piles and I've done it. Oh, there's the second gilded chest scroll. This is what has been the vault of all the giving so far. I mean, I still haven't found that blood vial. And I still, uh, I'm, I'm lacking finding coin, coin piles, but I'm confident. Ooh, I think this is a dungeon. Yep. I could quickly get in and break you. Nice. And another spider. But time is ticking down. I wouldn't say that I'm not confident, but uh, I haven't seen a single coin pile. So I should probably start focusing because it would suck to fail on coin pile or to die here, being trapped in a corner. Hello, any coins? That's not coins, that's ores. Okay, I might be getting a little bit stressed now. Still no coin piles and three minutes remain. Oh, that's a gilded bamboo cactoni room as well. Maybe I can just be a little bit sneaky. Uh, get what I can. Run! <laughs> Come on, Walt. Provide me with one PUI. That's all I need. I'm pretty sure of coins. Uh-oh, this is not looking good at all. I think I may have failed this. I just can't find coins. Unless there are coins down here that I can see real quick. But there isn't. Oh, uh, and I don't even know if I know exactly how to get home. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that coins? That is a little bit of coins up there. Oh, quickly now. Oh no. Come on. That's not what I need. That's not what I need. That's what I need. That's what I need. Oh, I gotta find, gotta find a hand in thing. No, not now. I only have this one kiwi. There's a hand in. Okay, uh, gotta get the stuff out, please. No, I'm messing up. No. Ah. I'm dead! I'm dead! No! Oh, that was so close! I wish I had a few more kiwis with me. Why did I not bring more kiwis? Look! I lived in 200 chests! Ah! Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. My shield was soul bound and so was my chromatic steel. And here's my ghost. Here's the, the hero. The hero of the vaults. I can't believe that. I could have got out there, but I thought that I could get them out of my backpack. My inventory was completely crammed though. Anyway, <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that we made the spirit extractor because this is a brand new thing in Vault Hunter's third edition. Hello there, sir ghost. I can pick it up with shift right click and then put him on here. Shame. Shame, you greedy man. And now, if I pay 18 gold, do I have 18 gold? I have 39 gold. Perfect. I'll pay that here and get my stuff back. <laughs> that was so close. That was so ridiculously close, though. If my inventory wouldn't have been full, I wonder if I would have... Yeah, I may have made it. It may have been that little thing that my inventory was full. Look at all this junk that I picked up that wasn't in my backpacks that could have saved me if it wasn't there. I should also I should also really have had Sir Pouch on my bar. I got a red banner but no completion. Instead it ended up costing me all the gold. I still rate that vault very highly though. This was the first one with over 200 chests looted, which is great. Ah, oh, Iskal, 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 you greedy, greedy man. In terms of loot, I did get quite a significant amount of gear. Pretty bad coin affinity jewel, I think I can smelt that. And 5 volt times 54 knowledge, a lot of carbon, that's because it was a bonus, it was a bonus ornate uh, vault. That was a really good rolled vault, by the way. I can't believe how absolutely amazing it is to de-loot with this new system. I keep saying it, but it's... It's just the best. Right, let's identify the gear. A hell duck chest plate. I don't wear a chest plate. Wait, I got three. Yeah, the game is telling me. I mean, to be fair, I did not die from the mobs, even though they did kill me on the last second. I died due to time and greed. Greed. 
Anyway, neither of these is an upgrade or anything I'm excited about, so we'll just smelt the recycle. Oh, and I guess I can claim this because I did find the two gilded chest scrolls, which felt very, very weird that I managed to find all of those. That's another... Ah, smeltable jewels, vault boots, they're common, and mine are better. Right, well, lesson learned. I gotta have more kiwis with me in the vault than the ones I find inside that very vault, so... I'm gonna make sure to always bring some kiwis in. You wanna know something more annoying than the fact that I died? I have 2,100 shards. <laughs> And I'm just short of buying the sour orange. It's like it's laughing in my face, considering I just died to time. I have 26 minutes. Hmm. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was the unluckiest spawn I've ever seen. And there was a table. <laughs> there was a potion table. I got double creepered. I died again. Oh no. That couldn't have gone worse. That couldn't have gone worse. <laughs> I'm completely out of gold now. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a professional. Unbelievable. That was double creeper. Oh. Four gold. Four gold to my name. I think I have a little bit more in my backpack though. The big question of course is I don't think I got I don't think I got enough. I think I got just short now. Right, let's have a look. Two thousand oh wait, 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 wait. Yes! With ten minutes remaining. Nice! I fought I fought very hard for this orange. And I shall store it safely in my special chest together with my lemons. These are for special occasions only. I can't believe I just got double creeper though. I Today has really been the day of defeat. And how does one handle day of defeat? Well, by building. I really do like this little area I have here, but it is getting very cramped and running out of space with all of these stations. And so I think I want to turn this into a little bit of a blacksmith. And yes, this is still just my starter camp, but I feel like I feel like I deserve after a day like this, I feel like I deserve a little bit more space. Actually, hmm. Maybe I keep those and do some oh Oh, I forgot how nice it is to have a hammer. With haste three, it's even it's even better. Did I die today? Two times? I, I don't remember. All I remember is digging blocks in Minecraft. Huh? Resourceful? This is a polished vault stone, which I have enough to build a castle of. And I'm gonna incorporate that as the or into this design. Ooh, what is this? Deep slate brick railing gate. Ah, I see. Uh I know I've died a lot today, but this, this has this is a graveyard feel for me. Don't know if I don't ever like those for this. Now, arguably, it's not a blacksmith without a forge. <laughs> forge. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I actually want I actually want to build a forge. Hmm. Don't know if I love these flint blocks. I think I need to go deeper. And I've got a little bit of an idea. Some of these. Edge frame slope and frame slope. That and that and then... Aha! Hmm. I like that and it serves very well as a diorite burner. Oh, check out this block. Plating block. It's super, super cheap. And it looks good. It looks great for this type of build. I like this. It's definitely getting there. This is looking like a super modern high-tech forge of doom. But I like it. Now to make it functional. I've got a little bit of an idea. Let's make a framed chest. And then replace that block for my framed chest. And I can... 
I cannot open it. Oh, wait, I may have to assign it a block. So let's give it that block and yes, I can open it. Okay, and then let's replace this block for a hopper. Although I do need it to face downwards. Yep, like that. And then that hopper shoots into my recycler, which in turn has a hopper like that. And then another hopper here. I'm not really sure what I want to do here, but yeah, that looks good. And then I need droppers and I need some quartz. Ah, easy peasy. Right, let's see if I remember how to redstone. It's been a while. Two droppers facing upwards. Comparator here. And I don't have a slime ball for a sticky piston. Uh, and only six redstone dust. Hmm, six redstone dust challenge. Repeater, block here, and redstone dust there, which should create a clock, yep. And then I could put an observer facing down there, and my last observer like that. Maybe? Will that work? Yes! It's not fast, but it works. <laughs> I'm completely out of redstone. That's silly. Very silly. Anyway, that works, which means I can put a chest here, and... Now when I scrap something in this hidden chest, it should be going in here. Yes! Oh, brilliant! I did a redstone thing! I love redstone! Now as we unlock mods, we can make that a lot cooler and better, but this, this is great for now. Camp Smith. Ah? Ah? D cozy? <laughs> I think this came out great, and I've spent quite a bit of time on organizing my jewels and prepared a lot of scrapping that I'm to test out this system, and everything should be should be in place now, so I don't have like overflow of stuff that I don't have any use for. Oh, and then I have a special chest for the jewels that I feel like I shouldn't gamble more on, including my super item rarity one. I can't believe I found this jewel. It probably have to wait. I don't, I don't want to waste this on a low level tool it'd probably be like a level 50 tool or something that's how good it is anyway i really like this it's a little it's a little camp smith it's <laughs> it's perfect for for what i need it for right now burning coal <laughs> no <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but let's try out the new uh, and, uh well my my first automated smelter machine in this world I'll be very careful so I don't drop in anything that I shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a click situation, but once I get some more mods, I can make this a lot cooler. But look at that. Things seems to be working just fine. It's, uh, I think the hopper is a bit backlogged. Yep, that's, that's okay. That's all right. We have time. Well, actually, uh, we don't have time. I... <laughs> I just realized this episode is omega long, so that's gonna have to do it for today. But I really do hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. Update 10 has been a lot of fun to work on, and now to get to play with it is, is super, super fun. And I really like the new cozy Camp Smith. So, with that, thank you ever so much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next episode.